Hey everyone, Jackie with Full Moon Loan Designs, and today I'm going to be working on a process called Frit Pile Press that I saw in Val's group, uh, Val Cox's Fusing Workshop. And I believe she gave credit to Helene Hennessy. I hope I said that name right. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna use these rings as my guidelines. I'm making three different sizes, and I think I can fit two of each of these on my shelf. And I didn't, as I looked through my stash, I didn't have too many droplets that weren't already pressed. So I'm trying it a little differently. For each of my color mixtures, I'm gonna do two. And for each color mixture, I'm gonna do one with just a hollow or a cylinder. These, I can't see that one very well. It's just got a tiny hole. This one's pretty solid. That one's hollow. And then I also stacked some of my flattened pieces in a dichro droplet, droplet on top. So I'm gonna get this set up and then I'll probably set the video up once I get going. But my colors I'm using today are Violet Peacock with Adora, River and Atlantis, and Ocean Deep and Blossom. So in each case, I have some of the lighter color opal fritz along with the transparents. Violet Peacock, if you haven't used it, it's so pretty, um, it, but it does have a lot of green, so I wanted to go with something that maybe uh, brought out that green. So I'm gonna get this set up and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so hopefully all of this shows up all right. Uh, I did find some measuring spoons that uh, I'm not using in the kitchen that are great for down here. And I have a one tablespoon and then I have one of the half tablespoon ones, so it'll be really easy to use twice as much clear as colors for this. So for my first one, my largest one, I already took a look to see, okay, about what fills the bottom as far as clear. And it looked like about two of the tablespoons. So for this one, and I'm not being too precise, this is very chunky, coarse, clear. Uh, this was done uh, quenched, where we put clear scrap into a colander heated it up to, I think it was 1200, and then plunged it into water uh, and then broke it up. So I'm just using a couple scoops and a couple pieces I dropped. So for that first one, yeah, two looks really good there. The next one, I'm thinking might only need one. That's the smallest one. And then this one down here, we'll go with one, maybe a, I suppose we could do the half here. So there I've got a nice little base down. And what I'm going to do is place these center pieces down that I have, which in this first color blend, I'm going to use the Ocean Deep and Blossom. So I'm going to put this guy in the center. And I'm just going to place my color frit around it. I know not all of that shows on the camera too well, but hopefully you can see. But before I do that, I am going to spread this out. And to be honest, I'm gonna sprinkle just a little more in there. I'm just, this might be a little different than others are doing it, but I'm just starting with my clear and really just making sure that my bottom layer here is covered. Same here, I'm gonna add just a little more. Just kind of filling those in. Double check this one since it's farther away. I will turn the shelf as I'm working. So what I think I'll do is a large one here, the smallest, the medium, then another large one, another small one, medium. I want to leave enough room that they'll spread when I heat them up. So I've got my clear down. And I'll move the camera here at the end so that you can see what it looks like. And I'm just going to try to get this as flat as I can and as centered as I can. And my thought for these, sorry, I'm going to turn down this music. My thought for these is these would really make pretty flowers uh, draped over like a comb former or even the smaller ones could go over egg shaped chalk. So I may end up adding a little more clear, but for now I'm going to put my pieces in. So for the first setup I'm doing, I'm going to use my centers. Now, honestly, this one is quite a bit large, or it's pretty large for that, so that might not be a good use for that. So for that one, I think I will put uh, one of my hollows in the center, and let's see, this one will go with that color. We'll do our green. 
I'm actually going to push it down in there so that it's on the bottom and just surrounded by the color. Now my second pass of these, since my smallest one here is the green colors, I'll probably do a larger one just to kind of mix it up a little bit. And that way I could do potentially two flowers together, a larger and a smaller, but we'll see. And then since I have it contained within the rings, I can move it around on the shelf where I want it. I will not fire these rings. I'm gonna carefully lift them up when I get ready to do the other set. So there's my first set down. So I'm gonna start with the Blossom and Ocean Deep in this largest one. And again, we used about two of the larger ones. So now for my darker color, which was suggested to do that on the outside, I'm gonna use one scoop and I am gonna put it closer to the outside. I know you can't see this too well right now. Of course, I'm making a mess here. I probably should have put it in a little cup to shake it out. You can already see that this might pattern and look really cool, just the way it's falling down in between the clear frit. So I didn't really get it all on the outside, but that's okay. <laughs> you know me, I just roll with it. And now I'm gonna take the opal-y color and use the blossom, which is more pink. I'm going to try to get more of that towards the center and then brush it off of the middle pieces here. Okay, first one is down. Let's take a brush. Excuse my reach. I just thought those little dichro dots on top would give them a little extra special look. Okay, so I am going to carefully lift this. Actually, no, I'm gonna wait until I, until I uh, turn the shelf around. I do have my shelf propped up on a couple of rolls of painter's tape and a little PSA. If you're ever doing this, when you take your shelf to the kiln, make sure that one of those rolls did not stick to your shelf because yes, that did happen to me. Uh, caused quite the mess, could have caused uh, a lot of damage, uh, but uh, I was very fortunate to figure that out before it got too far along. And I can always adjust these as I go. So now I've got the ones with the blues. And again, I'll start with my darker color, which is going to be the River Transparent. Almost used the wrong scoop. Now I'm going to use one of these. And similar to, oh, you know what? I don't need quite that much. This one had less in it, so I'm really going to kind of eyeball it. And even better, I'm just going to use fingertips. <laughs> I like how it, with the course, and you'll get to see it when I pull these rings away, it just kind of falls down in between the frit, so it should make very pretty design. That is my hope anyway. And Atlantis, which is more of an opal top. You know what? I'm just going to do it this way again. Try to focus more of this toward the center. Yeah, as I get to these smaller pieces, I think trying to use the spoon and get it in there won't be as easy. And yes, I have a lot of frit around on the shelf. I can pick that up when I'm ready to take it over to the kiln. My kiln does have, uh, it opens both ways, both clamshell and uh, traditional lift the lid. So what I will do is I will open it up clamshell style and just self set the shelf in there. This guy. All right, and now I am going to do, and I, I normally close my frit up as I go, I try to, but since I'm going to be using these all a second time, I'm just leaving them open. Here's this gorgeous violet peacock. I think for this one, we can go with about half. And yeah, I'm just going to sprinkle it in there. Do it this way. I'll measure it and then I'll use the palm of my hand. <laughs> 
trying to kind of center my little droplet. Or not droplet, hollow. Actually, that's not even true either. It's not really a hollow. This one is more just a, uh, a cylinder. Very interested in seeing how these come out and how they'll look for flowers. Yeah, I didn't do a good job of keeping that one contained in the center. And then Adora for my opal mix. Okay. Now I am going to lift these guys up. How about that? I hope you can see that all. And I will move the camera at the end. I'm trying to keep them in somewhat round piles, but I'm okay with whatever shape they end up. That's one reason I think they'll make great flowers. Because they should kind of stretch it. They'll be pressed under a heavy shelf. So they should spread out and uh, have take on kind of an organic shape. I know a lot of people have been trying this. I've, I've been watching and I've been wanting to try it for a while. So now we're gonna take that chance today. So now I'm gonna flip this back around. Should have brought my turntable over here. It would have made it a lot easier. All right. So now I think I'll do, let's see. I think my large one I'll do in the greens this time. Let's see. Larger. I'm going to put that over here, this one here, and this one in the center this time. Should have plenty of room for them to spread. I'm almost thinking I want to move this one a little bit. I don't know how easy that's going to be. At least I didn't get, make an epic fail here. The other reason I wanted to stack these was just so that they weren't so flat. That way my shelf isn't sitting totally wobbly when I first set them down. All right, so we'll do this. Making sure this isn't just hanging over the edge. And that. We'll do the clear again. So the largest one is going to be two scoops. This one is going to be about one and a little more. one just a little extra all right so clear I am done with oops I suppose I could leave my spoon out said I was going to do the larger one in the green so that is actually the violet peacock the this one I'm doing a centerpiece this guy here actually I may just go ahead and put some color under that oh and I accidentally just dumped a whole bunch of it together so you know what I'm gonna do this. I'll just manually mix it around. So this one might not quite be uh, more on the inside. And it might actually have a little more color than I wanted. Hey, can't have too much color, right? 
All right, Violet Peacock and Dons. Cover it. And the top for that one was Theodora. Oh, let's put our center guy down. Try to get it somewhat level. Feel like there's some areas I don't see much color in, but I can always sprinkle just a tiny bit more of this darker color as I look at some of the edges. I know we wanted the lighter ones on the edge, but it just feels like it's so heavy over on one side. Okay. And now I think I'll do blue for this. Actually, no, I'll do this more of a purpley color in the middle. Since we did the largest one with the Ocean Deep first time, I'm going to use... No, I take that back. I don't want to do two of the same size in the blues, so we'll do this one as the Ocean Deep and Blossom. And this guy will go in the center of the medium one. It works out because then both of my, or well, two of my hollow pieces are here in the center. Got some little greens under there. I was trying to set it flat. All right, so now we're going to do, we'll do our blue in the center here. a big piece of frit that some of it's just sliding off and down the sides, but that's all right. I know these colors are quite concentrated too, so I'm not too worried if I see a lot of clear. No biggie. Now we'll put our blue Atlantis blend. I think mine are not going to look anything like <laughs> the others, and that's okay. I like to do my own thing. You know me, I learn a technique and then I have to put my own spin on it. And that's that's just the fun part about working with this. Okay. And last one is our Ocean Deep and Blossom. I suppose I could actually measure again. I think I used most of one of these guys before. And I'm not liking how concentrated that is, so I'm just going to mix it a little bit. Okay, it's down. And lastly, the blossom. I realized I think I did this backwards. I think the heavier color was to be on the outside and I just put most of that on the inside. But you know what? We're changing it up. Actually, this one I'm just kind of doing both of them all over. <laughs> all right. So I will carefully lift. And this is just a set of, I think they're stainless. I, I, do, I wouldn't use them in the kiln, but they're great for this kind of thing. Uh, cookie cutters. A set of rounds. Now I could potentially go around with a bead of uh, like hairspray or something to hold stuff in place. I'm not going to. I just have to make it over to the kiln. I can see this one's got a lot of color on one edge. That's okay, but this doesn't quite look centered. And who knows what'll happen as it melts, it could end up way off center, but it would be down in the center of the flower, basically. So as you can see, this one's quite a bit different than that one. As I look at it more, I do wanna add a little more of the Ocean Deep. It's almost like it's a little too heavy in the pink blossom here.
And I apologize uh, for purposes of music credit. I have no idea what's on. I think it's just on a, a iTunes radio down tempo station. I feel like having that on when I'm working or creating. Interesting. Not not my usual thing. I'm a rocker at heart. Those that know me personally know that. <laughs> All right. So I am going to take these over to the kiln. I am going to put this down on my base uh, kiln blocks, kiln posts. I guess they are little one inch posts. And then I've got more paper cut over here. I have another piece of one mil fiber and another sheet of papyrus. I do that because this fiber is super cheap that I have. And that way I don't waste a lot of my papyrus, but I'll be putting it basically just the opposite. So I have fiber down first, papyrus, glass, then papyrus, fiber, and then I've got a heavy 15 pound shelf that will sit on top. I've done that in some other videos or at least one other video, so I'm not gonna take that today in the video. Um, but this is what's going in and tomorrow we'll see them when they come out. As always, thanks for watching.